What's up you money makers and it's CMC Army welcome back to the channel I'll have to share such a bad news with you in regards to HCMC's patent lawsuit that we have been waiting for as a next step Basically the bad news is HCMC patent has been invalidated by the authority We already know there is a such a hype and there is a strong community with HCMC in regards to the HCMC and Philip Morris lawsuit before we saw that there was such a big run up in terms of the short sell and we saw the HCMC stock price skyrocketed, the community came together. We still say that on stock tweets, we have more than 84,000 watchers, precisely 84,756 watchers. We already saw that HCMC had more than 400,000 shareholders at one point. And today I am sharing the latest and greatest news about HCMC and Philip Morris lawsuit as to what happened. Basically, the PTAP application or the PTAP decision has come to fruition. What the authority has decided and will go into more details because I have done my due diligence and analysis in regards to what exactly happened with this PTAP application and I want to share with you that what happened, what is the outcome, what is the conclusion what the shareholders can think moving forward and what could be the end game for the HCMC versus Philip Morris lawsuit. HCMC got a ton of traction in regards to the short selling that happened when we saw AMC, GME, CTRM, SNDL and HCMC was one of the stock. I know that I have a strong community on my YouTube channel, so I genuinely feel sorry for all of us at the moment. Write down in the comment section below what do you think what you are going to do with HCMC. Also hit the like button so we can spread this word out with more and more and more people subscribe to the channel. Because we did not stop with HCMC, but what we have done since HCMC are ton of stock that we invested precisely. TRCH Torchlight, MM80, MMTLP, ILUS, ILUS International, CYBL, CTRM, SNDL, and there are plenty and plenty of stocks. Right now, what we are doing in terms of the penny stock is Cosmos holding ticker symbol COSM and ticker symbol CEI. So remember that it's not the end of the game if you are into the penny stock and you're trying to play a, a few things and trying to get massive return on the investment. I also want to tell you that I am not a financial advisor nor I'm a lawyer, nor I'm a certified professional, so you should be doing your own due diligence. On this channel, we always talk about pros and cons, the good, bad, and ugly. Today is such a bad news that I want to share with you that HCMC patent has been invalidated by PTAB authority. And this news just came before a couple of days and I did go through the documentation and the lawsuit papers. What I think is this is almost the end of lawsuit. Because if there is no patent, there is no lawsuit. That's what I understand, not being a lawyer, but that's what my understanding is. If you think there is something different or there is still a light at the end of the tunnel, write down in the comment section below. Can HCMC appeal? Yes, they can. But does that make any difference? Probably not. So let's take a look at into this what happens. Now, patent number, I search by 10561170, which is the patent for HCMC, that HCMC was suing Philip Morris for this particular infringement of the patent that was owned by HCMC. And we saw that right here, take a look, 15th of December 2022, we got the final written decision from the PTAB authority PTAB decision. And here are the papers that I reviewed. Again, this was 15th of December 2022, United States Patent and Trademark Office before the patent trial and appeal board. Philip Morris, product SA was the petitioner and Healthier Choices Management Corporate, uh, Corporation was the patent owner. Now remember, Philip Morris has invested more than $3 billion and they have millions and millions of users of this particular product uh, that they have built already in regards to what HCMC is suing them for. Now remember, this patent decision came on very recently, but for the patent number 10, 10561170B2. 
Now remember, what is happening, and if I just give you a quick refresher, Philip Morris filed a petition, considering the inter-parties review claim number of this particular patent that ends with 170, Healthier Choice Management Corporation did not really file a preliminary response. We determined that the information presented in petition established that were a reasonable likelihood that the petitioner would prevail in changing at least one of the claim in 170 pattern that we always refer to. And we instituted this inter parties review to all of the changes claim paper 17. Now there is a long discussion going on, but again, Patent owner also filed a contingent motion to amend, which is the lawsuit that they're talking about this particular document and this particular PTAB authority that cancels the claim 128, proposing the contingent substitute claim 9 to 16 of the original claims were found unacceptable. Now, this is the authority. This is the decision. Yes, there can be an appeal, but I did not believe that there will be something that some, someone can get out of the appeal with this crystal clear decision making. I don't really want to bore you with what is going on in reference to patent, but let's move on to the conclusion so I can share a little bit more detail. There are more than 20 or 39 pages or 38 pages right now, as you can see on this particular document. But I want to walk you through the decision making and the conclusion that the authority noted. Now remember, here is the conclusion. There is page 35 that you can find the conclusion as well. Remember, what the authority writes is right here. So let me share this with you. Based on the foregoing, patent owner has not satisfied the statutory and regulatory prohibition against introducing the new matter revised proposed substitute claim. Why I'm sharing this information with you? Because this case was super, super interesting to me personally, not only from the investment standpoint, but also from the legal and how the patents work standpoint. We have hundreds and hundreds of thousands of patents available and the way it works is the patent authority will have to go through all the patent back in the days before they approve the newer patent. For a reasonable person in reasonable time, it's impossible to go through all the patents. So that's when this rare scenario can happen as well. Now remember, the conclusion here is, which is right here, the conclusion, petitioner has shown by Re, uh, uh, petitioner has shown that the evidence that the claim in 1 to 8 are unpatentable or the Hamel patent summarized below. What basically that they're trying to say is there is a Hamel patent already filed that covers what HCMC is claiming that they have found. Now, I'm not saying that they did not find, but what I'm trying to say is HCMC, whatever that they innovated was innovated in the past that HCMC probably was not aware of which is what I'm thinking. Now remember, what is the order? The order is claiming that this patent are held to be unpatentable. So once again, order that claim, the, the, the authority orders that the claim of one to eight in patent 170 patent are held to be unpatentable, which means it was already innovated, it is already available in the market, and HCMC cannot really patent something that has already been patented. Furthermore, the order, the patent owner revised the contingent motion and they denied to revise the proposed a substitute claim in 9 to 16. And they're ordering this particular final written decision for the parties to this proceeding seeking a judicial review of a decision must comply with the notice and service requ requirements of 37 CFR, so on and so forth. Basically, what happens next is we already know that there is really thin, there are th really thin chances that HCMC can win this lawsuit, win this patent, and make this patent acceptable. What HCMC has been doing is they have divided themselves into four different subgroups or subsidiary companies: HCMC, Intellectual Property Holding LLC, and then they, then they have their choice market. Third one is the online arm and vitamin stores, and the last one is Healthier Choice Wellness Center. Now, if you are still owning its CMC, you decide what you want to do. Usually what I do is I write for free and that, that's what I've been telling you forever. If you're already writing for free and if you're already invested still in its CMC and if you believe that it can go 10x, write down in the comment section below and hit the like button. There is definitely a strong community behind its CMC. There is not a discussion or that there is no point. But take a look right here. Healthier Choices Management Corp announces the commencement of stock repurchase authorization and that came at the end of October. 
we will hear more in in q4 at the end of the q4 which is within next few weeks as to what hcmc is planning to do but one of the things that you want to note is the board has authorized an aggregated common stock repurchase up to five million dollars HCMC may purchase the shares on their discretionary basis from time to time. Now, what this $5 million means is it's not 5 million stocks. They want to buy back $5 million worth of stock. And if you take a look right here, their market cap right now is $34 million. Now, if you think about, let's say, round it off to $35 million, And if you think about $5 million, it's one-seventh of their total market cap that they want to repurchase at certain price. Yes, we don't know, know the price, but we know that the price has been around one to two level, as you can see on my screen, and this is HCMC. Now, there is definitely risk trading in HCMC or any other OTC traded stock, so you do your own due diligence. Usually, I do not have more than five to 7% of my total portfolio in penny stocks, OTC stocks, and risky plays that I'm playing. Many times I write for free as well, but $5 million buyback is a pretty big thing. HCMC may purchase the share on a discretionary basis. Once again, the timing and the amount of the purchase transaction will be subject to discretionary. To the HCMC, based upon the market condition and other opportunities that HCMC may have for the user and investment of the cash balances. What their CEO is saying that we believe our shares are currently undervalued and based on the strength in our balance sheet, the coupled with our long-term outlook, the opportunity exists to create value for shareholders while continuing to invest in our key driving strategies. We continue to believe that we're making necessary investment through the acquisitions and changes to position business for the long term. We cycle this investment and changes we expect the revenue increase operating margins to expand and generate a free cash flow by 2023 now we are at the but uh, we are pretty much there in 2023 now if there is free cash flow that is going to be a win-win situation so i wanted to quickly show you what this free cash flow looks like so give me one more second and i'll show you because once again i wanted to say that hcmc had the record sale of 5.8 million dollars for the third quarter which was 77 percent more year over year growth and record growth gross margin of 1.9 million, which was also up 36% year over year growth. Now, what you want to think about with this massive, massive sales and revenue numbers, massive sales gross margin, if HCMC can do better in terms of their gross profit, which is they're not doing pretty well. With this loss, they'll have to eat up some of the fees as well, more than half a million dollars in terms of the lawyer fees and whatever they have, will have to pay to its, uh, Philip Morris uh, as a company, so on and so forth. Their no net sales, 5.7 million in 2022 for the quarter ending Q3, September 30th, 2022. Now, once again, cost of sale, we know that the inflation played an important role, close to 4 million, that puts a gross profit, 1.8 million. With the operating ex uh, expenses that you already know, what we have seen is the loss that it seems we made 2.1 million. With that, that net loss in 2022 up until now, uh, was or three month ended September, for three month ended September, the net loss uh, was 2.07 million, which was 4.7 uh, million for the nine months in 2022. So for, for nine months, we have seen that we have done the sales of 16.9, almost $17 million, whereas we lost $4.7 million in total net loss. So that's the loss in 2021. They did 1.5 million in loss in nine months. However, they've jumped up the revenue by almost 7 million, but they also still lose. They are still losing money and they will have to figure out what they can do better. One thing that I wanted to tell you is their current asset. They have cash and cash equivalent, pretty strong cash and cash equivalent on their balance sheet. $30 million cash compared to what they had in 2021, December 31st. 26 million. So all in all, they gained $4 million in cash in cash equivalent in 2022. With that, their current asset is 4 million, puts their current asset 34.1 million compared to 28.5 million that they had in 2021 at the end of December 31st. So this is what you want to consider that the company has pretty healthy balance sheet. What they are, are also trying to put together is their four point plan to increase the shareholder value. Do you decide for yourself once again, there's when there's a strong community 
That could be a wave at some point. Now, if you are thinking 0 0.0001 is pretty low number and at one point they can double, triple, quadruple, you want to decide whether you want to hold or what you want to do. But all in all, the Philip Morris lawsuit is not no longer in the picture for this lottery ticket that many people were thinking. So I feel sorry for you if you are a shareholder, but think about this as well. That this plan includes buyback common stock. We already talked about the $5 million that they want to repurchase. We don't know when and at what price point and what their discretion will be. Of course, they want to do subsidiary spin-off. And at one point, they might have an ambition to get listed up on a NASDAQ. The third thing is stock dividend in terms of the new co. And they want to also make sure that they form the new company out of this HCMC fork. And the last one is they want to raise the capital through the institutional investor, which I do believe strongly that that's a great thing because having the equity capital raised from institutional investor will strengthen and fund both HCMC and this new company moving forward that they're trying to do. They are going to raise the capital this way. And we already know that they are looking for more than $13.25 million dollars. In order to properly fund the new company, the contractual investment commitments for $13.25 million have been made from the some institutional investors that are investing in HCMCs recently that they completed the offering of Series E preferred stock. I hope you liked this video. If you did, if you find it informative, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. I'll make sure I bring to, to you many more penny stocks, many more opportunities for your due diligence. So don't miss out, hit the like, hit the subscribe, turn on the notification bell, and thanks for watching.